QuickBooks 9 customer statements. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email address and our phone number, and you'll find us on Facebook at St. Louis Test Prep. What I'd like to do is jump over to an Excel document, which is our continuing effort to explain things. Now, I want to talk about customer statements, and first of all, how do you get to that section on QuickBooks? You can go to Statements, which is the button on the screen here that talks about statements right here. Or, another way is, go to Customers, Create Statements, if you want to actually create statements. Customers is on the drop-down menu at the top, and we're going to go to Create Statements here in a minute. But let's talk about the logic. You remember in uh, past videos that we talked about the accounts receivable aging schedule, which in black here it says, who owes me money? And specifically, which of the invoices that I've sent to people are still outstanding, that is unpaid, unpaid. And we have here on the screen a couple of ways that we went in to find out that detail. So I'm going to go into reports, customer receivables, customer balance detail, reports. Customers and Receivables, the second section, Customer Balance Detail. All transactions. So it says here George Hendrick has been sent four invoices between January 3rd and March 31st. He's been sent, I'm sorry, January 3rd and March 15th are the invoices. They all have invoices beside them. And we see that he made a payment on March 31st of $300. But as of right now, March 31st, he still owes $2,400. And if we scroll down, $2,400 is one of the bigger invoice amounts of the 10150 that were owed. So again, the way I got there was reports, cu customer and receivable, customer balance details. So let's say you as a business owner open up the office on Monday morning and you look at this to see who owes me money and how old is the invoice. For example, by March 31st, this January 3rd invoice is nearly two months old. Nearly 60 days. So, what can we do about it? Well, one thing we can do is send the customer a statement so they're aware of how much money they owe. And another thing we can consider doing is a finance charge. Because if you think about it, accounts receivable is simply extending credit to buyers. You are serving as the bank. You are loaning money to the buyer so they can buy your product. So it may be reasonable at some point, in bold italics here, to charge them interest after some period of time because essentially you're charging them interest on a loan you extended so they could buy your product. That needs to be disclosed in fairness to the client. It needs to be on the invoice. We can talk about how to do that later. And it also needs to be on the account statements. Adding it to an invoice can be as simple as writing in that box in the invoice, um, balances will be charged X percent interest after 30 days, for example. So all that being said, let's go over to QuickBooks here. And let's talk about how we get to create a customer statement. Again, it's customers at the top, create statements. Okay? Customers create statements. So I'm going to click on that button. And here's where I end up. I'm going to make the statement date 331, the end of March. We're going to make the statement for the year to date so far, January 1st to March 31st, the first three months of the year. That's going to be our statement period. We're going to do it to one customer, and that one customer is going to be George Hendrick. We're going to print the due date on, on transactions, and then we're going to assess a finance charge. It says, do you wish to set up finance charges now? I'm going to hit yes. I'm going to make an annual interest rate of 7%, no minimum balance. There's going to be a 30-day grace period before I start charging finance charges. So grace period in days 30. The finance charge account 
going to be an income account. So I'm going to add a new account under other income and I'm going to call it receivable finance charges. And I'm going to make it a sub account. Well, I think I'll leave it as it is. I'm going to leave it in other income because it's not directly related to the business that we do every day, which is tree service. So I'm going to leave it as other income and I'm going to hit save and close. And so you'll see now that we have a finance charge account called receivable finance charges. Assess finance charge on overdue finance charges would be interest on interest. I'm going to ignore that for the moment um, because I don't think that's necessary. In other words, I don't think the balances are going to get so large that the interest will be large enough that I need to charge interest on it. Calculate charges from the due date. I'm going to still have my 30-day grace period. So all that being said, I'm going to hit OK. And you'll see that I had company invoices. So it was going to be company-wide. I'm going to hide this marker down at the bottom of the stage so we can see the entire screen. It says, now at the top, click the Assess column for each customer for whom you wish to calculate a finance charge invoice. Okay? So, we've got assess, last FC, last finance charge, customer, overdue balance, finance charge. So we've got this screen, and we can change the assess date. We can mark invoices, we can unmark invoices. Let's go to settings here. There's the 7% with the 30-day grace period. Okay. Collection history. You gotta select a customer. So I'm gonna click assess charges. And now I'm gonna preview the George Hendrick statement. Okay, here's the statement, and you can see you've got an option here at the top to zoom in. Let's click that again. So it says Joe's Tree Service, the 331 statement. Uh, we can amend this to put in George Hendricks' name, but you'll see that's his street address. And I'm going to scroll down here because we zoomed in so much. It's a little hard to get it all on the screen. So we've got balance forward zero. He didn't know anything from 1231 of the prior year. Three invoices and their amounts. A payment of 300. And now down here we get this aging schedule. So zero to 30 days past due, nothing. 31 to 60 days past due is 2,400. The first two invoices due on the 2nd and the 14th of February. So the total amount due is 2,400. So the nice thing about this is, is that it provides an aging here at the bottom, an aging amount. You'll now note that once I've set up finance charges, that if I go back to the home page, I've got statement charges finance charges here in the middle that go to my statements. Now let's see if I can do the steps to actually assess finance charges. So I'm going to do finance charge button on the home page. I'm going to change the assessment date to 331 and I'm going to hit customize. Finance charge assessment date here in the top corner 331. And I'm going to hit customize. And what I see here is I have the assess check on, on the left here. Last finance charge, FC for finance charge is zero because I have an, 
access to anybody yet. This is the first time. Here's George Hendrick, Julie Jones, Ray Lankford, Tom Pagnazzi, all have balances. Joe Johnson has an asterisk in front of his name. We look down here in the corner, it says, customers with an asterisk have payments or credit memos which have not been applied to any invoice. If you remember, Joe got that discount on his invoice that uh, he took advantage of. So he's now got a $4 credit. So Joe has a $4 credit that he has, and that's why he has an asterisk there. You'll notice also that Joe, because he has a credit, does not have a finance charge assessed. Now bear in mind that this is not a full year's charge at 7%. It's just the charge based on how long the invoice has been outstanding. So I'm going to hit Assess Charges. It says the transaction is more than 30 days in the future because the date of this video is actually February 24th. And we're talking about 331. I'm going to say, are you, are, are you sure you want to make this change? I'm going to hit yes. And now everything's gotten assessed. Let's now see what the impact is in the financial reports for assessing a finance charge. So I'm going to go to reports, customer receivable, customer balance detail, and see what happens. Reports, customers and receivables, customer balance detail. And we'll notice that it says invoice 331 FC1, finance charge number one, there's the $2.54. Because what QuickBooks does is actually create another invoice for the finance charge. So there's one for George Hendrick, here's one for Julie Jones, and you can work your way down. There's one for Ray Langford, $1.6, and Tom Pagnology, $1.65. Well, I wonder what happened then if I look at my reports, company financial, balance sheet detail. And I'm going to go down to accounts receivable. Other current assets, fixed assets. And what we see here is, here's our checking account. If I were to expand this out to 331 and hit refresh, here's the checking account expanded. If I look at my accounts receivable expanded, I now see under accounts receivable FC 1 through 4, which are the finance charges that are posted as a receivable here. So that's where it is in the balance sheet. Now what about if I go to, I'm not going to save the report, reports company financial profit and loss detail, and if I go through 31st, whoops, 31st of March, click on that, and hit refresh, I'm wondering if there's some income I'm wondering if there's some income for that finance, those finance charges. And if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, once I get past net ordinary income, you'll see that it goes from here's ordinary income, income from jobs, goes to expenses, and then below it here gives you a subtotal that says net ordinary income, which is the income from running our business day to day, handling the tree service business. 86.14 is our income. And then below it we have other income and expenses. Here's the other income account. And here are the finance charges recorded as income. So I have the finance charges recorded in income. And I also have company financial balance sheet detail going through the 31st and hitting refresh. I have accounts receivable for the financial charges as well. So I see that they got to my financial statements. And finally, let's make sure that if we look at a customer statement for George Hendrick, that the finance charge is listed on a statement. So I'm going to go to Customer, Create Statements. 
I'm going to make the statement date the 31st of March. The period is from 1-1-2001 to 3-31. I'm just going to do one customer, and I'm going to click on George Hendra. I'm going to hit Preview, and then I'm going to hit Zoom In. And we can see here that on 331, we do have a finance charge of $2.54 that increases the balance by $2.54. That's the end of QuickBooks 9 for continuous classroom weekly live chats on critical accounting topics, including QuickBooks. You can find it on the page on our website. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, all one word. You'll find a complete list of videos on our website and a video listing for live one-on-one -on -one tutoring and live chat sessions stltest.net is our website here's our email and our phone number thanks very much and we'll see you next time